Today we're going to talk about the passage of the American Rescue Plan into law and the stunt that Republicans are pulling in response to it. I also interview White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki about when the money is going out the door, Republican efforts to take credit for its passage, whether Biden not signing stimulus checks was a missed opportunity, and how the White House plans on getting other legislation passed over the 60 vote hurdle in the Senate. I'm Brian Tyler Cohen and you're listening to No Lie. Less than 50 days into Biden's administration and he's officially signed into law the American Rescue Plan. People are already seeing $1,400 relief checks. Uh, there's money for child tax credits up to $3,600, an extension of jobless benefits at $300 a week, money for vaccine distribution, which has already ramped up tremendously. It's even got a provision that makes eligible future cancellations of student loan debt tax-free. So normally, if the government was to eliminate $10,000, let's say, in student loan debt, that $10,000 would be treated as income and you'd be taxed on it. But thanks to this legislation, any future student loan debt cancellation won't be taxed. So that is a really good sign of things to come. All in all, it's a bill that's so good that Republicans, zero of whom voted for the thing, are now starting to take credit for it. <laughs> you want to talk about shameless Roger Wicker, the Republican senator from Mississippi, uh, he tweeted, quote, Independent restaurant owners have won $28.6 billion worth of targeted relief. This funding will ensure small businesses can survive the pandemic by helping to adapt their operations and keep their employees on the payroll. You would think if these guys are so hellbent on trying to take credit for the American Rescue Plan that they would have, oh, I don't know, voted for the thing? <laughs> Even a single Republican? Instead, they decided that the hill that they would unilaterally die on was opposing a bill so popular that they immediately signed on to Twitter to start praising it. Like, not only did Republicans preclude themselves from being able to take credit for any of the obvious impending benefits that it'll deliver, but they did so unanimously. They handed Democrats that extra talking point for no reason. And because of that, I don't know, misguided sense of unity that Republicans achieved by banding together to oppose a bill that 75% of the country supports, now Democrats get to say, the Democrats did this. The Democrats cut you those $1,400 checks. The Democrats gave you up to $3,600 in child tax credits. The Democrats gave you $300 a week in unemployment benefits. The Democrats gave state and local aid so that your firefighters and police officers and first responders and teachers could get paid. The Democrats funded vaccine distribution so that you could go get that shot and return to normal. Like. We practically begged Republicans to sign on to this legislation. We begged for them to be able to take credit. But it was them who made sure that they wouldn't be able to take an ounce of credit for the bill and its effects. And, and just a side note here, you want to know why the Republicans didn't vote for this thing? Because the Tax Policy Center analyzed the American Rescue Plan and found that the poorest 20% of Americans are estimated to see a roughly 20% boost in income from the plan, while the richest 1% will receive an income boost of 0%. That is why Republicans didn't support it, because it doesn't help rich people. Contrast that with Trump's uh, 2017 tax cut for corporations and the ultra-rich. In that plan, the top 20% of households reaped 65% of the benefits, while the bottom 20% got only 1% of the benefit. Every Republican voted for the bill that cut taxes for rich people. Zero Republicans voted for the bill that gave relief to regular people. The proof is right there in their votes. And by the way, the ARP isn't the only thing that some Republicans are trying to take credit for. The latest desperate move by the right is now trying to take credit for the vaccine rollout. Here's uh, Sean Hannity demanding that Joe Biden thank Trump. Hey, Joe Biden, he needs to pick up the phone. I suggest call Mar-a-Lago and yeah, Bring unity to the country as he says he so desperately wants and thank President Donald Trump. Okay, now, a few things here. First, Trump had no actual plan for the vaccine rollout. His quote-unquote plan was to let states figure it out and to do so without funding. Trump officials actively lobbied to deny states money for vaccine rollout. Even by their own projections, their rollout was a bust. Uh, in October, Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar estimated that the Trump administration would vaccinate 100 million people by the end of 2020. You know what that number ended up being? 2.8 million. That's it. So, uh, you know, whether he was juicing the numbers because the November election was coming up or they just fell woefully short out of sheer incompetence, either way you cut it, their rollout was an abject failure. I mean, hell, Trump himself hid the fact that he got it. You think a president who's committed to the successful rollout and widespread use of a vaccine is going to get his vaccination in secret? Especially when it's his own supporters who have the highest rates of vaccine hesitancy in the country? Give me a break. 
All the while, it has been Biden's administration that ramped up vaccinations to a high of 2.9 million in a day, three and a half times as many as were given when Joe took office. And he just announced that by the end of May, we'd have enough doses to cover every single adult in America. Two months ago, the country, this country didn't have nearly enough vaccine supply to vaccinate all or ever near all of the American public. But soon we will. We've been working with vaccine manufacturers, Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson & Johnson, to manufacture and purchase hundreds of millions of doses of these three safe, effective vaccines. And now, at the direction and with the assistance of my administration, Johnson & Johnson is working together with a competitor, Merck, to speed up and increase the capacity to manufacture new Johnson & Johnson vaccine, which is one shot. In fact, just yesterday, I announced, and I met with the CEOs of both companies, I announced our plan to buy an additional 100 million doses of Johnson & Johnson vaccines. These two companies, competitors, have come together for the good of the nation, and they should be applauded for it. It's truly a national effort, just like we saw during World War II. Now, because all the work we've done, we'll have enough vaccine supply for all adults in America by the end of May. That's months ahead of schedule. So let's not pretend that there's any equivalency between these two administrations in terms of efficiency of vaccinations. And beyond all of that, here's the last point. You do not get credit when you were responsible for overseeing the deaths of 400,000 Americans. Like, that's it. Sorry. You don't get to take any victory lap whatsoever when you presided over the third biggest mass casualty event in U.S. history, behind only the 1918 pandemic and the Civil War. Let's just be honest here. If the Trump administration was really looking for credit, they had months to take any of a litany of steps. And it's not like we were trying to, to rob Trump of the ability to take those steps. We were begging the guy to take them. He could have encouraged the use of masks. Instead, Trump politicized them. He could have backed stay-at-home orders. Instead, Trump fomented protests against them. He could have encouraged people to work and shop remotely. Instead, he demanded that businesses and restaurants and schools reopen. He could have trained a spotlight on scientists and public health experts. Instead, Trump attacked Dr. Fauci and touted any whack job miracle cure he could find deep in the bowels of Reddit. <laughs> His response was scientifically engineered to exacerbate this crisis as much as humanly possible. So as far as deserving credit for anything goes, I'm pretty sure that train left the station months ago. Any progress on getting this virus under control happened in spite of the Trump administration, not because of it. Here's the difference. During the Trump era, it was all about who was to blame. During the Biden era, everyone's looking to take credit. And that's the whole ballgame right there. The very fact that Republicans are already trying to take credit is an acknowledgement of the fact that this White House is doing it right. And look, Republicans can try until they're blue in the face to pretend that this is the result of Donald Trump, but we all lived through it and watched while the guy spouted off about hydroxychloroquine and injecting disinfectant. We were all well aware of how responsible he was for solving this problem. So from the relief package to the vaccine rollout, Republicans might be falling over themselves to take credit, but the simple truth is that the reason it's working is because Democrats are in charge, and that's not gonna be lost on anyone. So listen to my interview with Jen Psaki, where we talk about Republican efforts to take credit for the passage of the American Rescue Plan, whether Biden not signing stimulus checks was a missed opportunity, and how the White House plans on getting other legislation passed over the 60 vote hurdle in the Senate. Check out the interviews playlist on my YouTube channel. Thank you.